In this video, we take a look at a variety of different network hardware. For your exam, you will require knowledge of a range of hardware commonly used for building a network and connecting to a network. The list is vast, but the exam board provides examples of hardware you need to know about. You need to understand the purpose of this network hardware, but you won't be required to understand how they physically work. So let's go through the list now. First is a modem. A modem transforms digital information from your computer into analog signals that can be transmitted through wires. It can also translate incoming analog signals back into digital data that your computer can understand. It does this by modulating and demodulating electrical signals sent through phone lines, coaxial cables or other types of wiring. Most standalone modems have two ports, one that connects to the outside world and an Ethernet port that connects to a computer or router. That brings us on to a router, which is mainly responsible for routing data between devices on a small home network or between devices on a network in the internet. A modem connects to one port on the router, often labelled wide area network, and your devices connect to the other ports or wirelessly using the Wi-Fi standard. Now, if you examine your home network, you'll probably find you have a single device with a connection traveling outside your house and through the wall. These days, most internet service providers give their customers one physical device that serves as both a modem and a router. There's still different technologies. Not all modems include routers and not all routers include modems. You will need both integrated or not to connect your home or organization to the internet. There are two main methods for connecting devices, via wired or wireless. With physical wired connections, we have many cable choices available to us. The three most popular uses today are twisted pair, coaxial and fibre optic. A twisted pair cable is made up of a pair of insulated copper wires. These cables can be affected by noise from external magnetic fields, but they're more affordable than both coaxial and fiber optic cables. They're only able to provide a relatively low bandwidth and twisted pair cables are generally used for telephone networks, data networks and cable shielding. Coaxial cables are made up of four cylindrical components from inside to outside, a solid conductor wire, a layer of insulation, a grounding conductor and a layer of exterior insulation. They can also be affected by noise from external magnetic fields, but to a much lesser extent than twisted pair. Providing moderate bandwidth, they're more expensive than twisted pair, but cheaper than fibre optic. Coaxial cables are used for feed lines that connect radio transmitters and receivers to antennas, as well as computer network connections to two audio and cable television. Fibre optic cables are made up of very thin optical fibre bundled together into a single cable. The fibres can be either glass or plastic. They have the highest noise immunity as the light rays are unaffected by electrical noise. Due to the high bandwidth capabilities, fibre optic cables are more expensive than coaxial and twisted pair. They're commonly used to support long distant connections between cities and countries, as well as data centres and organisations that are transmitting large volumes of data. Now let's take a look at network interface cards. Now without a NIC, a computer simply cannot connect to a network. A NIC allows both wired and wireless communications between computers on a LAN or connected to a large scale network using the IP protocol. A NIC is both a physical layer and a data link layer device, providing the necessary circuitry for physical layer processes and some data link layer processes to run on it. A wireless access point is a device that creates a wireless local area network, usually in a home or office building. It connects to a wired router, switch or hub via an Ethernet cable and projects a Wi-Fi signal within a designated area. 
For example, let's say a school wants to enable Wi-Fi access and reception, but doesn't have a router within range. It can install a wireless access point near the front desk and run an Ethernet cable through the ceiling to a server room. Wi-Fi range is limited and easily interrupted by various construction materials. So most businesses use multiple wireless access points for full coverage. A hub allows you to connect multiple devices to one network. It operates on the physical layer and is considered a passive device. In other words, it simply broadcasts the transmission it receives to all other connected devices. Unfortunately, that means the network can easily become flooded with unnecessary traffic. It is purely a hardware device. There's no software installed on it. And hubs are typically much slower than switches in transferring data. A switch also allows you to connect multiple devices to a network, much like a hub. It operates on the data link layer, but it is an active device meaning it can inspect transmission and route them to the correct device, keeping unnecessary traffic to a minimum. A switch typically has software installed on it for administration and configuration purposes. Switches are typically much faster than hubs in terms of data transfer. Switches have largely replaced hubs in all organizations in use today. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What hardware is required to build and connect a network? So that's everything you need to know for the exam. If you've got another 30 seconds, pop your pen down and just watch the remainder of this video. Although we've presented each of these devices and pieces of hardware as discrete items, many modern network devices serve many multiple purposes. Look at the device that connects your home to the internet. Chances are it's a single physical device with all the functionality of a modem, switch, router and a wireless access point all built in. On top of this, it's probably also acting as a firewall, a dynamic host configuration protocol server, a network address translator and more.